cholesterol granuloma, a pneumatocele, a metastasis, a cholesteatoma, or a normal variant. I always throw cholesteatoma in there. I figure any time there's temporal bone, I just throw in cholesteatoma. It's always feasible. Except here. Okay. Uh, interesting. So we have something to discuss here. Um, this, uh, let's, let's discuss this particular case. Uh, the petrous apex is asymmetric. Um, the left side is pneumatized. The right side is not pneumatized. On the uh, axial, uh, non-enhanced non -enhanced T1 weighted image, uh, T1, C minus. Uh, there's bright signal on the T1 which uh, can be either fat or blood. The key in this particular case and what makes the diagnosis is that there's no destruction or expansion. Uh, and this is a normal variant, uh, asymmetric petrous apex pneumatization. And I gotta tell you, like I get, I get cases sent to me from time to time, Shum, we, we don't see much temporal bone and you look at this for me and I say I don't see much either really, but uh, uh, would, you, would you look at this? And I, I, this is one of the most common things that I see. Uh, and people could confuse this with cholesterol granule all, all, all the time. In reality, it's just an asymmetric uh, petrous apex pneumatization. The bright signal is caused by fatty marrow. Uh, and uh, uh, and it's, it's very common. Okay, let's try this one. We got a bunch of quick hitters here. Is this, is this a cholesterol granuloma, petrous apocytis, metastasis, cholesteatoma, or normal variant? This is kind of fun. Um, I get, maybe I'm the only one having a fun cholesterol granuloma. This, this time we did great. Okay. The uh, petrous apex is asymmetric. Uh, there's an expansile lesion on CT. Uh, lesion is hyperintense on T1-weighted images. And the diagnosis is cholesterol granuloma. You're absolutely right. Uh, we've talked a little bit about cholesterol, cholesterol granuloma earlier, but this can occur at, at the petrous apex or in the middle ear. Uh, all have T1 hypersignal due to, a hemor due to the hemorrhagic component. In the middle ear, there's often a long history of chronic otitis and usually no bone destruction. At the petrous apex, there typically is bone destruction or expansion, uh, and usually a long history of chronic otitis, but not always. And petrous apex lesions without a history of chronic otitis, I've heard them referred to as giant cholesterol cyst. The histology is the same. There's an example of the middle, the middle ear cholesterol granuloma that I showed earlier. Okay, is this. This is nice enough. We remember I put these scarlet slides up here. Cholesterol granuloma, petrous apocytis, metastasis, cholesteatoma, or normal variant. I want the syncopated clock. No. The key on this one is the history. That's exactly right. Great. Okay, uh, let's, let's, let's discuss this case. Petrous apex, asymmetric. Uh, destruction of septations on CT. Uh, intermediate signal on T1-weighted uh, images, not hyperintense, very important. So it's not a cholesterol granuloma. Heterogeneous enhancement. We also have some meningeal involvement. And if you look closely uh, inside the internal auditory canal, there's some, I don't know if you can see it me. Oh my gosh. I should have worn a hat. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not going to turn around again. Okay. There, there is uh, some, uh, there's some, I don't think you can really see it here. There's some, there's some enhancement of the facial and the superior vestibular nerves. Okay. So uh, there's diffuse meningeal disease and uh, the history was really the key here. Uh, diagnosis is petrous apocytis. Very good. Uh, petrous apicitis is an acute or a chronic uh, suppurative mastoiditis which spreads, spreads to petrous apex air cells. Theoretically only occurs in patients with a uh, pneumatized uh, petrous apex. Uh, the, the number has been bannered around for 
uh, since Hippocrates, I think, is about 30 percent of people have a uh, pneumatized petrous apex. The classic symptomatology, which is rarely uh, complete, is uh, great in ego, great in ego syndrome, otitis media, fifth nerve pain uh, due to involvement of Meckel's cave, and sixth nerve palsy due to involvement of Dorello's canal. Uh, petrous apicitis, most people, including myself, feel that this is an osteitis analogous to coalescent mastoiditis. Uh, occurring in those patients with a pneumatized petrous apex. Some people f feel that uh, petrous apicitis is, uh, is an osteomyelitis, and that implies that it's a, f a functionally distinct portion of the temporal bone. Okay, next slide. Is this a cholesterol granuloma, petrous apicitis, metastasis, cholesteatoma, or normal variant? And I missed this case. I've never actually admitted that before when I've shown it, but I did. Came across on the view box and I blew by it. Okay. Okay, here we have a pre and post contrast T1s and of course the axial CT. The key here is the intense enhancement. You see pre contrast uh, and uh, post. Uh, and uh, there's destruction uh, at, CT, at CT, and uh, the diagnosis is metastasis, 94%. Very good. Okay, another one. Quick hitters, like I said. Cholesterol granuloma, petrous apicitis, metastasis, cholesteatoma, or normal variant. And this is the second most common. The asymmetric petrous apex pneumatization is the first most common case I see. This is the second. Okay, well, it's tough. Okay, you figured eventually I was going to show a cholesteatoma. <laughs> well, you're wrong. Okay. Uh, here, again, we have an asymmetric petrous apex. There's intermediate signal on T1, bright signal on T2, just uh, pretty much consistent with fluid. Uh, and the key is that there's no destruction or expansion on CT. And uh, this is normal variant. It's just trap fluid. I'm, I, I don't know if it's really normal variant, but it's as close, that's about as close as we're going to get because you just see it so common and there's absolutely nothing to do about it. Uh, and um, as a matter of fact, in, uh, there's a, a terrific article in 1998 in the AJNR um, by the group from Utah, leave me alone lesions of the petrous apex, and this is one. Um, it's it's not, not at all uncommon to get uh, dammed up fluid uh, within uh, petrous apex air cells, and you see some bright signal on T2-weighted images. Uh, it, gets, uh, it gets the uh, you know, clinicians and you know, some of the radiologists kind of in a flutter, uh, and the key is to get to CT and see that there's no destruction or expansion, uh, and uh, it's just trapped fluid. It's just plain nothing and nothing to do about it.